Thank you. Okay, so our first question is from Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi. Nice to see you again, Ben. <laughs> Melanie, I just got off the phone with my best friend who told me that he's scheduled for his first round of dialysis. How do, and he's totally unreceptive and doesn't want to hear about it. And it's brought us to really uncommunicative. I mean, we've been best friends since we're four years old and I'm watching him fall apart. He's had bypass surgery, out of control diabetes, and now his kidneys are failing. And for years I've been a broken record and it's really taken a toll on our relationship. From listening to you, obviously I'm doing everything wrong, but there's a sense of urgency. I don't know what to do. Yeah, um, thank you for your question. And I'm sorry to hear about your friend. And I, you know, it, it sounds like a really painful situation. And I can hear that from, from your end, you know, you're trying to talk, it sounds like what you're saying is that you're trying to help him recognize the value of, and the importance of, of eating more plant-based or eating a plant-based diet, because you're trying to save his life and help him survive. And you're coming from a place of genuine caring and compassion. And he's not feeling, he's, he's feeling um, very resistant and, um, you know, he's not ready to, to make this change, it sounds like. So I, you know, part of, people will change when they're ready to change and not before. And people love, and it sounds like you love your friend, you know, loving relationships and healthy relationships, we allow the other person to be the expert on their own experience. Meaning if somebody believes, if, so, if somebody wants to live their life in a certain way, even if that's not a way that we wish they lived and it's a way that's harming them, if we want to feel, if, if we want them to feel that we respect them as the adults they are to make their own decisions with all of the consequences that come with that and not see us as people that are trying to fix them or make them better, we kind of have to let them do that. And um, we have to let people make the decisions that they're gonna make and decide whether we can live with those decisions or not. If he is not engaging in behavior that's directly harming you and you know disrespecting you, then it's not really up to you to be in a position to dictate what he should or shouldn't do with his life, you can share with him what you believe would be helpful for him and tell him why you believe this would be helpful for him. But at the end of the day, if you want to stay connected to him, you probably will have to accept that he's going to make his own choices and love him anyway, and accept that people always make choices that make sense to them because of who they are and where they've come from. All of us do this. Many of us make what seem like very irrational choices, but when we do it, they always make sense in some way to ourselves. So I, I'm, you know, it's a big question you asked and it's an important one. Um, and I, that, that's my answer to it for, for what it's worth. I wish we had four hours to talk about it, but in a nutshell. Thank you so much for that. That was very meaningful. Um, I'm going to go to Stephen next. Stephen, if you'd go ahead and unmute. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, just a wonderful presentation. And, you. Uh, you know, I will admit that I am not the great communicator. Um, and, uh, you know, I've got, you know, I've got family members that, I mean, they're doing okay, but they're not whole foods plant-based and they're not really interested and you know what you've just said sort of helps me think about that a little bit um i also have a friend like the previous caller who uh has type 2 diabetes loves the keto program is really in decline and really doesn't want to hear he'll listen a little bit but it, i don't see him ready to change either so uh You've already commented if you want to say a few more words, but anyway, very impressive presentation and I'm going to try and get smart about what you're saying. So thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, you know, you talked about sort of feeling like you're, you don't always communicate as effectively as you, you wish you did, or you'd like to, you said you're not the best communicator. And I do want to speak to that. Um, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, I'm always shocked that most of us have to learn complicated geometry that we'll probably never need to use. And we don't get a single formal lesson and how to relate in a way that's healthy and how to communicate effectively. And we all just kind of like stumble along doing the best we can, having been born into families, most of which are fairly dysfunctional relationally and into a world that is profoundly relationally dysfunctional. And so, you know, the good news is that Relational literacy, which includes effective communication, is something that can be learned by anybody who wants to. Like this is my book, Getting Relationships Right, is a one-stop guide to relational building relational literacy. You can, um, you know, you can find this information. The information is out there. It's not rocket science. So, it, there, even if some of you are out there are thinking like, oh, I haven't been communicating well. My relationships have been suffering. There's most relationships, you know, most relationship, many relationship problems are not beyond repair. You can always start to build relational literacy. You can always improve your communication. You can always go back to these conversations, revisit these conversations that you've had before and say, hey, I know we didn't do that well in this conversation, but I've been thinking. I really want to let you know the reason I've been talking to you about diet is because I care so much and I understand you're going to have to make your own choices at the end of the day. I get it. It's hard for me, but I get it. So you really can, can do this and, and work on this. Um, and I can say like, as a psychologist, I watch people all the time making choices that are psychologically problematic, people staying in relationships that harm them, people leaving relationships that don't harm them, people, you know, just putting things, you know, psychotropic drugs in their bodies that are, you know, harming them or whatever they may be. And, and I recognize, like, I'm not the expert on their experience, no matter how much I know about psychology, I am not the expert on what somebody else needs at any given moment in time. And the minute I start thinking that I know better than somebody else what's right for them, I believe that I'm, I'm in a position where I am not being humble enough. And relationships will improve tremendously if all of us recognize that everybody else really needs to be seen as the expert on their own experience and not perceived as needing, you know, to be taught by us or changed by us, even if we might want to share information with them that we think that could help them.